If you don't know what a shishi odoshi is, it's a Japanese water fountain that makes a noise. It's also called a, uh, a deer chaser because of the sound it makes. Apparently it's supposed to scare away deer. I don't know if it would scare away the deer <laughs> that we have around here. They seem to be bothered by nothing. Cars don't scare our deer. <laughs> At any rate, you may have first seen a shishi odoshi in the movie Kill Bill. At least I did. I'd never seen one before, and so I thought it was it was really cool. So uh, this is my uh, attempt at making a shishi odoshi. I got all of these bamboo poles a few months ago for free. They were old stage props. Now the only problem with that is a lot of these are split right down the middle. In fact, most of them are. But I've managed to found, find a couple of places where there's no splitting. I've cut out a little section of one to show you what they look like. Wherever there's one of these growth joints on there, you can see that there's a a little hard baffle in there. Unfortunately, since so many of these are split, there's holes in there that lets water through. So that's my best split-free section of bamboo, and the ends inside of there, those baffles look really good. By leaving this a little extra long, it gives me enough room where I can add some weights back here if, if it's not gonna be perfect. I've stuck a dowel through that outlet pipe and it's fairly tight in there. And I cut some bigger holes in these stands so that it can pivot on them like that. This is the inlet spout and I'm just going to hook it on like that. And I've drilled a hole all the way through all of those walls there so that I can run the hose through. To get my hose to fit into that hole, I've got one of these barbed connectors. Here's how I'm gonna get that in there. I've tied a knot around it here and I've ran a string through there so I should be able to fish it on up through there. Like that. <laughs> now I just will run that all the way through this pipe. And I've also put a little notch here. I've cut some redwood boards that I'm going to use for the box and this one is a little bit shorter. That's going to be the front piece that'll stop right like that. And I'll glue together two boards for the base. All right, so I've got my bottom piece cut out and the box is going to fit over it like that. But I think what I'm going to do is rabbit out these edges so that it fits up inside of the bottom. and the box will drop right down onto those rabbits. Once again, I got a lot of good suggestions on Facebook as to how to make a watertight wood box. What I've decided to do is I'm going to put on a coat of deck stain and sealer first. Then I'm going to fill all of the cracks with silicone sealer. Well, that was a bit of work. So <laughs> here's my spout that's gonna bring the water in and I've got my hose already connected to it. The way I'm going to attach this is just the way I did with this spout, one of these straps. 
I think that's going to work out really well using those straps because that way I can twist it a little bit wherever I need it to point. So I got this little bitty fountain pump a long time ago. I picked it up on Craigslist and so I finally get a chance to use it and it's just the perfect size for this and so I'll just sit it in there and I'm not sure what to do about the cord. I guess I'll just maybe tack it around the back or something but I can give this thing a try now. I discovered a couple of things. One, I raised this up a little bit so that it wasn't at such a sharp angle. And I also, temporarily, I put a washer on the back here to give it a little extra weight. Well, I think this one is working now. Well, that worked out really better than I thought it would. <laughs> it's just one of those projects where I wasn't entirely sure along the way how well this was going to work out. And there's really no way of testing it until it's done. This little pump has suction cups on the bottom of it. So I was able to just grab a tile that I had and just stick it to that. And so that gives it some weight and it keeps it upright. I'm glad I decided to use the stone as the noise maker because it really makes a good sound. And I think that's kind of a traditional way of making these. I did put a washer on here to give it some more weight. That was just the right amount of weight. So now that I'm done testing it, I'm just going to epoxy that onto the back. This part I've just got wired together. That way I can move this around as need be. I have cut out some hardware cloth, just some steel mesh, and I'm gonna decorate this a little. 